Welcome back. In my last video, I mentioned that I was going to try a different method to make a helix. Now, I wanted to try this method because while the AnyRail Helix tool does work, I found that you cannot get enough detail on the helix easily, and you don't have the ability to change the different parts of your helix. A good example would be a helix that goes between three levels, and you want to have an exit on each level from the same helix. Now, this method requires a bit more work, but honestly, I think this is what I would do if I were building a helix. In fact, in the next video, I'm going to show you the design of a very odd helix that I made for a new track plan that I am considering for my own layout. So first off, here is a helix designed with the AnyRail tool. It has 24 inch radius curves, it uses 4 loops and rises 16 inches, and it has a grade of 2.7%. Well, actually the grade works out to 2.65% and we'll need that number later, but for now 2.7% is just fine. Now, with this helix, the trains come in this way, and they exit this way. But say, for some reason known only to you, you want your trains to, say, come out this way. So what do you do? Well, the first thing I would think of would be, well, let's delete this last piece of track here in our helix. So let's click on this piece of track. So now it has the green lines telling us that it has been selected. Now, let's just delete it. Looks like it went away, but how do we know? It still says 16 inches here and 15 inches down here. So exactly what did AnyRail decide to delete? Well, we can find out by going to our 3D view. And oh look, it deleted the corresponding piece of track at the end of our first loop. We asked AnyRail to delete this piece of track here but instead it deleted this one. And that isn't quite what we wanted to do. So we're gonna go back to 2D. And then I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna click, and I'm going to do a Control Z to undo. And that should bring that piece of track back. Let's check quickly. And there it is, it's back. Now, why did any rail delete the piece of track that it did? I have no idea why it did that. I asked any rail, to delete this piece of track, not the bottom piece of track. Now, when I was playing around practicing this video, I found that if I came in from this side of the helix and then selected the track, it would erase the bottom piece of track in the loop. And if I came in from this side and then selected and deleted, it would erase the top piece of track. So I was quite pleased with myself that I figured out how to erase the piece of track that I wanted to erase. But when I did my full read through and practiced this script, it didn't work anymore. Now there was a week and a half between when I discovered that method to when I did the read through and any rail stopped letting me select the track in that way. And that is something I've mentioned before. Any rail will work one way on one day and the next day it refuses to do the same thing again. Now, is it just my computer that does this? I don't know. Maybe AnyRail likes your computer and happily does the same thing over and over again, but on my computer, uh-uh, no way. It's very inconsistent. So how do I erase this piece of track? Well, if I turn off the height, I can see that there are connection points here for this piece of track. But if I highlight that connection point, and then hit disconnect. I'm not quite sure what I disconnected. Sometimes it disconnects the top, sometimes it disconnects the bottom. But even if I did disconnect the top piece, I can't grab it because any rail always grabs the bottom loop like this. I can't grab that piece of track. No matter what side I come in on, I can't grab that piece of track. Now, in all my practice runs, I could not grab the piece of track I wanted. Uh, if you figure out a way to do it, please let me know. But for right now, I don't think there's a way to do it. So what I decided to do was to build a helix in a different way, and in such a way that I could go in and view and modify each level of my helix independently. So let's build a new helix with the same radius, height, and grade as this one. 
Okay, so here's our new AnyRail screen. Now I added a piece of flex track here to build our helix with. The first thing I want to do is to come over to layers and add some new layers. Now I'm going to add four new layers, one for each loop in our new helix. I'm keeping this layer because I'm using it to represent the rest of our layout design. So I will name this one Layout. And then we're going to rename the other layers as follows. Helix Level 1, Helix Level 2, Helix Level 3, and Helix Level 4. Now in your overall layout design, you would probably want to add another layer and name it something like Helix Levels. And then group these four layers underneath that layer. And that's something I showed you in video 16 on how to arrange layers. And if you haven't seen video 16, uh, I suggest you check it out. Now let's make Helix Level 1 our active layer. Then we're going to come over here and we're going to hover over our flex track. And we're going to see what layer it is on. And you can see down at the bottom that it is on the layout layer. So we're going to move it to the Helix Level 1 layer like this. We'll select it, come up here, and click Helix Level 1. And now if I look down below, I can see it's on Helix Level 1. So let's curve this piece of track. We're going to make it 90 degrees and 24 inch radius. And we'll say OK. And I'm going to move it over kind of like that. Now I'm going to copy it with Control C and I'm going to paste it three times. And then I'll just simply connect them together. And congratulations! You've made a circle of track, which is going to be completely useless for what we want to do. So here's what we're going to do next. We're going to go to the starting point of the helix. Now, as usual, in my example, I'm going to use the top of the helix as my starting point. But your starting point could be here, here, or here. It just depends on your design. And if I needed the track on my helix to come off at an angle, I could design it and then just simply rotate the entire thing. Now, I'm going to go up here. I'm going to select this connection point right here. And I'm going to disconnect it. Then I'm going to go to the last piece of track in this loop. I'm going to select it and I'm going to go to set height and I'm going to set the height to four inches. Hit enter. And you can now see that this piece of track is at four inches on both ends. And then we've got this big 10.6% grade from here to here. And we don't want that, but don't worry, we're going to get rid of that. Now we're going to select the entire loop and use smooth slope. And if you remember from my video on using smooth slope, you can go to the first piece of track in your section, then go to the last piece you want to highlight, hold down shift and click it and you'll get the whole thing. And sometimes it works the other way, going from the last piece of track to the first piece of track. It just depends on how any rail is feeling at that moment. So then we're going to come up here and we're going to hit smooth slope. And you can see we have a 2.7% grade like we wanted. Now the other way I could have selected the pieces of track is I could have just dragged a box around them like that. That would have done the same thing. Now I want to color code my helix. And this is something you don't have to do, but it allows each section to stand out more when you edit the helix. Now in the past I've mentioned that it would be really, really nice if I could just change the color of track pieces to help identify them. Unfortunately, the only way to do this in any rail is to create a section. And creating section has drawbacks and maybe a future update will give us the ability to color pieces of track individually without creating a section. But in the meantime, we'll use the create section tools. So if your entire helix is still selected, go up to the top and select create section. So let me highlight this guy. Come up here, select create section. Now I'm going to name each section the same as the layer name. So we'll name this one Helix Level 1. And now let's give it a color. We'll come down here, click on color. And because this is easy for me to remember, I'm going to use the standard electronic resistor color code to color code my loops. If you don't know the resistor color code, use whatever colors you want. 
Now, the resistor color code is black, brown, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, gray, and white for the numbers 0 to 9, respectively. And there is a completely politically incorrect mnemonic to remember this that starts with bad boys and embarrassed the girls in my high school electronics class. But you got to remember, this was in 1970, and things were just a wee bit different then. And uh, yeah, actually, there were girls in our high school electronics class. Anyway... Since this is level one of our helix, I'm going to make my first layer brown. And there's the first layer of our helix. Now, I need to copy this loop to make the second layer. So let me highlight it. I'm just going to drag a box. Do a control C. I'm going to come over here. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make helix level two, my active layer click here and I'm going to paste it in with control V. Now, since we made helix level two our active layer, the loop we copied on helix level one will be pasted into helix level two. And if you look down below, you can see our working layer is helix level two and our track is on helix level two as well. Now I'm going to pull this helix over this way and you'll notice that it's underneath the helix level one and that's because this piece of track is higher than this piece of track in elevation. This one goes from 3 to 4, and this one is going from 0 to 1. So while we have it highlighted, let's create a section. We'll name it Helix Level 2. And the number 2 in the resistor color code is red, so let's select red. I'm going to click out here, and we now have our Helix number 2. But now we have to go and set the height for helix level two. So we're going to do it this way. This first piece of track is going to start at four inches because that's where this level ends. So let's go to this piece of track, right click, do set height. We'll type in four. Then we're going to come over here, select this last one, and we're going to set its height at eight inches. Then we'll come out here, select it. Make sure you don't get anything of the, your first loop. You only want the second loop highlighted. And we'll do smooth slope. And there we go. Starts at four, you can't see the four, but it starts at four, 2.7% grade, all the way around, and ends at eight. Now, all we need to do is attach this piece of track to this piece of track. So I'm going to grab it, I'm going to drag it over until I get that blue circle, and then I'm going to release it. And you'll notice any rail decided to make a figure eight. It does that sometimes. So I'm going to do a control Z, try it again. And it did it again. And one more time. Third time's a charm, apparently. So if you get the figure eight, just use control Z to undo and try again. And it might take you several tries to get it to snap correctly. Sometimes it will snap where you want it on the first try. Sometimes it'll take you 15 tries. It's just one of the many, many things that any rail does to annoy you. So let's check our drawing in 3D real fast, see what we have. And there we go, we have the first two turns of our helix. Now I'm gonna show you something. If you check your helix in 3D and it looks like this, it means you forgot to apply smooth slope to your loop. So I think it's a good idea to check your helix in 3D every time you add a loop. It's easier to catch a mistake early in your design rather than having to dig back through your work later on. Okay, let's go add the third level of our helix. So let's go make helix level three, our active layer. And I just noticed that my layers are out of order. So let me hit layer name. And now they're in something a little more useful. So let's go to layer three. And then we're going to paste in our loop again. So I'll do a control V. And there's our loop. I'm going to drag that guy down. And note once again that this new loop is behind the other loops, and we'll correct that in just a moment. 
So now while it's highlighted, let's give it a section name. We'll come up here to Create Section. We're going to call it Helix Level 3. And because it's the third Helix Level, we're going to give it the color orange. And we'll click over here. And now we'll do the same thing again like we did to Layer 2. We'll come to the first piece of track, and we're going to set its height at 8 inches. Come to the last piece of track, set its height to 12 inches. Select the whole loop. And hit Smooth Slope. And there we go. Deselect, grab the first piece, and hope it pops in the right way. And no, it didn't. Try again. Okay, I didn't show it, but it took me 10 tries to get that loop to pop into place properly. Nine of those tries, it made a figure eight. And then on the 10th one, AnyRail said, oh, that's what you want to do. And then it put it in the right place. Ugh, AnyRail. All right, let's go check it in 3D and see if we missed anything else up. And the answer is no, it looks like a three-turn helix, doesn't it? Let's go back to 2D. So now we want to add the final layer of our helix. We're going to go to Helix Level 4, and we'll come over here and paste it in. I'm going to do Control V, and nothing happened. Now the reason nothing happened is, and this is something I have not shown to you before, after you select a layer, you must click here on your drawing space with your left mouse button to make your drawing space the active area. If you don't do that, then the layer box is still the active area on the screen. And you can tell that it's active because this bright blue bar here. So after I select my layer, I'll come over here and I'll click in my drawing area. And you'll notice it's now gray up here. And that means my drawing area is now my active area. So let's paste that loop in and pull it down and do the same thing. Come up here, Create Section. We know what name it's going to be. And we'll give it the color for number four, and that color is yellow. We'll pick that nice bright yellow there. We'll come over here, select the first piece. Height, 12 inches. Last piece. Height, 16 inches. Select the entire loop, smooth slope, deselect, grab the first piece, cross our fingers, and it clicked into place properly. Let's go check our 3D, and there's our helix. Go back to 2D. Now, because I have each loop of my helix on a different layer, I can do whatever I want to my helix. Say I want to come off the top layer with a 60 degree curve, like maybe right here. Bring my track back this way. All I have to do is make sure my active layer is helix level 4, and it is. And then I'll turn off the other layers. I'm just going to hide them so I can't see them. Now, I'll come over here, and I'll select this piece of track, and I'll delete it. Now, I know I only deleted this piece of track in my helix. Then I'll come down here to this piece of track, and I'll say Curve Flex. And I want to change the angle to, 90 deg uh, to 60 degrees, sorry. So we'll type in 60. Our radius is going to stay the same, and we'll hit Enter. And there's our new ending point for our helix. Now, I can turn on the third layer here. And that shows me that my 60 degree curve is right above the other curves in my helix. And we can also do this just to check. Turn off uh, level three, go to level one. And as you can see, as I go through the layers, when we deleted that last piece of track on helix level four, it 
only deleted on Helix level 4. It did not do it on Helix level 3. So let's get rid of those. You'll notice that the end of my new 60 degree curve is at 15 inches. Now the old ending point of this piece of track was 15 inches and it was up here. So we've lowered this piece of track a tiny bit. And of course it increased the grade from this point to this point to 4%. So what we'll do is we will apply a smooth slope to our entire helix, and let's do that. I have to turn all of the layers on, like that. Then I'll come over here, I'll draw a box around everything, and I'll hit smooth slope. And you'll notice that it has added a quarter of an inch to each point. Before, this would have been 11 inches, and this would have been 12. And then here it actually went up 5 sixteenths of an inch, which is kind of interesting, but it still says it's 2.7%. Now there's two ways I can check the separation of my tracks. The first one is I'll come up here to show. I'll turn off height and slope percentages and then select vertical clearance. And it's a little hard to see. We're going to have to zoom in on it because it's showing us all of the levels. Let's zoom in right there. And it's telling us it's 4 and 1 16th of an inch between the levels. Now let's turn off vertical clearance and put slope percentages and height back on. The other way I can do it is I can look at this point right here. It's 14 and 5 16th of an inch. I can come over here, make helix level 3 my active layer, turn off helix level 4, and I can see we're at 10 and 1 quarter. So from this point to the same point on level 4, I've got a separation of 4 and 5 sixteenths inches. And I can do the same for the other levels, and it looks like it will come up at 4 and a quarter for those. Now, my original calculation for the grade was 2.65%. Any rail, when we smooth sloped everything, made the grade out to be 2.7%. Now, if I look at a whole piece of track in my helix like this, I can see down at the bottom that the length of this piece of track is 37 and 11 16 inches. Now, I have 14 of these sections in the helix, so that totals 527 and 5 eighths inches. Now, we come over here and look at our 60 degree section, and we see it is 25 and 1 eighth inches long. So that gives us a total run of 552.75 inches. Now we divide that into our end height here, which is 15 inches, as you see, and we get a grade of 2.71%. Now I don't think any rail is going to resolve the grade down to one hundredth of a percent, so that's why it still says 2.7. But between what we calculated in the first place, and what we have now, we added 0.06% to our original grade of 2.65%. And that's probably nothing you want to worry about, but if it is, then you've got to do a little bit of tweaking. Now, I could do this. Let's add a straight section of track to the end of our helix. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to make helix level 4 my active layer. I'm going to come back here. And because I don't have my track library open, I'm going to make a piece of track this way. I'm going to select this piece of track, and I'm going to copy it. Come over here, paste it back in. I'm going to right-click on it, and I'm going to say Straight Flex. And I'll give it a length of 39 inches. Now I have a piece of straight flex track. I'm going to snap it to the end of my 60 degree curve, like so. And you'll notice it turned yellow. And that's because it attached to the upper level helix loop. And that loop is color coded yellow. Now one thing I can do here now is I can say I want this point to be 16 inches. So let's go set that point to 16. Hit OK, and you'll see I have a grade of 2.6% here. So let's select the entire helix, smooth slope it, 
and it comes back to 2.7%. So now I could do this. I could select this guy and I could bend it like so, then straighten it out, give it some nice curve. Let's look at the bottom. Let's say we want to make it uh, 30 inches, something like that. So now you have your train coming in down here, rising 16 inches, and then going out this way. Now there's one more cool thing that we can do here. So let me get rid of this piece of track and let me turn off the fourth level and we're going to go down to the third level. Now say in addition to having my train disappear in this direction from the fourth level, I also wanted the train to be able to come off of the third level. And this is where having my individual helix loops comes in handy. So let me go grab a switch. So here's a curved switch and it has radii of 24 and 28 inches, as you can see down at the bottom. Now I could take this guy and I could drag it over here and I could line it up and it's not going to line up perfectly. You're going to have to do a little bit of tweaking. I got grabbed the wrong thing there. Let me grab the switch actually. You'd have to do a little bit of tweaking. But now you could have another exit from your helix on a different level by putting in a curved switch like this. And what I would probably do is I would probably attach it at one point or another or break the track and insert it in the middle. And I'm not going to show that here. Now, in fact, in the next video, I do something just like that. I'm considering a different track plan and I needed a really odd helix design. And I'll explain more about how I did that in the next video. So there you have it, a way to make a helix that's going to let you do a bit more tweaking to your track plan design. Now, is it worth the extra time to do it this way? Well, I'm going to leave that up to you to decide. So if you just need a simple helix to go from one level to another, go ahead and use the AnyRail Helix tool. But if you need something you can modify, use this method. So I hope you found this video informative. And it shows you that sometimes there is another way to come at a problem when you design your railroad. And in that process, you're going to gain a bit more knowledge of AnyRail. So take care and we'll see you soon.